um, a, a, a misconception. Oh, I don't know if it is or not. People say to me all the time in the car game, they say, well, my credit is good, but I got a bunch of medical bills on my credit report. Mm-hmm. Is it illegal for the credit companies to report credit because of HIPAA? It's just a, it's a rumor that I've heard. No, I, I don't know. that's untrue. It is okay. illegal for them to provide. So, welcome to another episode of the Brothers Who Talk with Terry and AD. This podcast is about men talking about everyday shenanigans, the stuff that makes us mad, to the topics that concern why in the world do these guys have a podcast. Let's get to it. We're going to start the show like we do every other show. Yes. AD, how was your week, brother? Yes. Interesting. So, well, no, actually, it's great because I got hey, married. Go. I got yeah. married on Sunday, yeah. uh, remarried to my boo of 20 plus years. Um, so it was Good exciting. The, the, the re- reuniting. <laughs> so it was. It was, it was he just a lemon pepper. I like it. <laughs> it was great, though. We had an awesome time. Um, very hot, but uh, we worked it out. Everyone had masks on, and I got some pictures coming up. I've been working on the little. A little something, something. So uh, look out for that. I, I, yeah. see, I see them pictures. You look see scorched. Them pictures. Like, yeah. <laughs> you look scorched. Like you have been outside all yeah. day. Like, yeah, yeah. I was trying not to. You know, where you take pictures, like, all right, I gotta look fresh. It'll look like you just came out the air. But you can't look fresh. It's kind of hard to do. That's kind of yeah. hard to do. Right, right. Man. <laughs> How's your week been going, brother? You, you know what? I had a great week. It started out. Awesome. I have my oldest daughter and granddaughter. All I right. flew in to see me on the first. All right. uh, we spent a couple of days up at Bear Lake, Utah. Uh, if you ever in this on this side of the country and decide you want to go for a vacation, he says no. <laughs> never. Don't say never, brother. <laughs> but uh, Bear Lake, Utah, you know, go for a couple of days. I rode right. my first jet ski. Oh, yeah. How did that go? I didn't know uh, you didn't tell me what. Scary. Good. <laughs> like her, her you, didn't the, you, didn't the video? you didn't see the video? Oh, how did I Oh yeah, man, yeah. I'm about to get on there. You guys gonna get a treat on the. On, you watch this on YouTube. You gonna get a treat. All right, yeah, it was it was here. Uh, yeah. So what I realized oh. is, you know, I'm a big black man. Um, I'm back of the <laughs> That's not how it's supposed to go down. Like that. that's not. That's not. But, you know, it turned out, you know, my, my fingers were not were numb because I was holding on to Melissa. She was Oh, trying. wait. Oh, you didn't go by yourself? Oh, uh, the devil is a lie. No. Who, who, who do you think you're talking to, bro? No, 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 no. I rode in the back of my wife. I, I, I'm holding on to her life vest, a dear life, bro. And my fingers go numb. So, but they go numb as right. we're in the middle of the water. Oh, nice. So as we're coming back in, I have no feeling in my fingers. So... I'm like, Lord, and she's hitting them waves like it's no time. Right. Like, we gain an air. It's like, all right, come on now. And I'm like, because I know if I go over, it's, it's a wrap. It's like it's one. It's, oh, it's a, man. But oh, man. overall, it was yes, a sir. great experience. Awesome. Uh, the, the jet ski, the bear lake was great. I uh, spent time with my granddaughter, my, my first daughter. I took her back this morning uh, to Salt Lake City. And I'll, I'll tell you, uh, my arms is high. That's a long time. Uh, but sir. It, overall, it was great. Awesome. It was great. It was great. Week. It was great. Week. All right. So, go ahead. No, I was going to say, let's go ahead and get, get what our, get our what guest we, on. What are we going to do right now? A man who needs no introduction. All right. Not, not a nun if you're on Periscope. I'm not sure if he rocks on Facebook. I mean, I'm on Periscope. Uh, Mr. George Pitt, P I T T S. Yes. Don't get it twisted with a pit of a prune, okay? George Pitt. <laughs> Yes. My man. All right, hold on. Do it. Bring him on. What's going on with you, man? How was your week, bro? Let's get, let's get you involved here. Man, it was good. Okay. It was good, man. To, you know, this was been really good. Just, you know, getting a lot of stuff done. You know, making sure that I'm staying, you know, on top of my game. Uh, but, man, it's been good. You know, I had a launch this week. Uh, okay. Did some ads. And, uh, man, it's, it's, it's just been a good week, man. I, I was telling another friend of mine, man, I feel like everything's working. Right. Yeah, you know how rare that is, you know. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, there's usually something that's off, but it's finally you got this one time that you feel like everything is working. So yeah. that's an awesome week, man. It's just Wednesday, so. 
This right. is Wednesday. The only thing he, he can only go better from here yeah. uh, on, on Wednesday. Exactly. So, Georgia, like we were saying before we came on here, uh, there are a couple of segments that we do that we love to do. Uh, the first one we're going to do today is uh, tell them why you're mad. Tell them why you're yeah, mad. mad. Uh, and this is the segment where we're going to tell everybody what we're mad about this week. Yeah. If, you, if you listen to the intro, I know some of us don't listen to intros, but if you listen to this one, it will tell you that we're going to tell you why we're mad. And you're going to, and, and so you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. So, AD, we're going to start with you. Right. you I'm going to take this. It's cool. I'm going to jump on it, brother. Why are you mad today? Tell you what I'm mad. I know. I know. It's small. <laughs> it might be small. It might be small. Not but small. half open containers of drink, like water. Like, why? Why? Like, just sitting there, just, who's is this? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And nobody, nobody claiming. So now it's like, so we just gonna throw away good stuff now? We just gonna yeah. leave? And then, yeah. then you find, the worst is fine. Two or three, you just like, nobody, nobody claiming these. None. Yeah. Nobody yeah. knows who's yeah. leaving. So that's, that's the one that's really got me. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shout out my man, Kev. He, he hooked me up. He's like, listen, I'm gonna shoot you some tell him why you mad. I saw it. I was like, that's the one right there I needed today. <laughs> that one right there it burns me. Oh, you got a little, you got a little peepers? <laughs> What's people up? Told, people told you that? People said you that? Kevin no, no, oh no, another my, my man Kevin from back oh. in the day. And I gotta and I gotta oh. give a give a shout out. Like when we actually you know what I'm gonna do it right now. Um, a couple of months ago we did a podcast about uh having good friends and bad friends, right? Yeah. And and I I spoke about not having friends as an adult. Oh, but, that's the one. Okay. Yeah, but sharing that, I've pushed away a lot of my friends because I didn't want accountability. I didn't want to be connected or whatever. And my homeboy, he felt some kind of way because he was with me as an adult. But I was what I was trying to share was we weren't connecting. Like I was, I wasn't reaching out like I should. But I had to apologize because I'm like, you're right. You were there. You were there to be a good friend. So I, I I'm humbly apologizing. I told him I'm gonna shout it out on the podcast because that's where I made my mistake and I'm going right. to shout it out and, and, and correct that. And we're cool now, but I just told yeah. them do it publicly. So there we go. <laughs> just, so just throw it in there. That's what we call a retraction. A retraction. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that, that's I miss just tough. <laughs> and so we, we're going to involve the, the man of the half hour, Mr. Pitts. Yes. Her. I'm not sure if you thought about it while you was, while you was backstage, but tell See, him why you're mad, man. Man, I'm going to tell you exactly why your boy is mad. <laughs> it's this disrespectful heat, man. <laughs> Listen, man. We had a run from March to like late May, early June, where it was in like the 70s and 80s, which is never like that. Right, I'm right. Talking about cool breeze, you know, overcast. Like, see, have you ever been to Seattle, Washington, or Portland, Oregon? Like, overcast what? Right. And in the Midwest, you know, I'm in Oklahoma, so where it's here, here is just hot for no right. reason. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And all of a sudden, two weeks, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, after June, it goes from like 80 to like 94, 96, wow. 99. <laughs> so, man. That's why your boy is mad. <laughs> I, I hear you. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of this, this weather playing games with your boy. <laughs> we was getting, because I like the rain. So we was getting uh-huh. rain in May. We were getting rain in June. I was like, man, if we get this for the whole summer, we <laughs> You know? Oh, man. Oh, man. Wow. Oh, that's, that's why. I'm like, I'm like
right? It works for eCam. They make the cam links to where you can use your camcorder to uh, do it in 4K. They make the LED lights and the green screens, all that. They ain't got nothing. I've been waiting for a cam I can't get it. The next topic, the next segment that we get into, so I would just partake in this because we have a pretty good time doing this. It's kind of funny. Oh, All right. man. But. Top five. Oh, and we're back. The top five. Now, what I normally do in the top five, you guys, if this is the first time watching, I read five of the dumbest newspaper articles ever written. All right? And the last couple of weeks have been hilarious. We're going we to keep it rolling, bro. George is like, uh-oh. What am I going to come up into? <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> the first one, I'm going to go through them real quick because I got three minutes between now and the next commercial. The first commercial. The first one. Bugs flying around with wings are flying bugs. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, this article was written by Wayne Hansen out of uh, Redwood, and he, and he said flying bugs around, uh, bugs flying around with wings are flying bugs. I wonder if he figured out all by himself for the day. He take the IQ team at all. Hey, the hey, hey. I, I don't. I don't understand. But Wayne, if you're watching this, sir, and if you're still running these streets, stop it. No, right there, more. Okay. <laughs> Number two, real quick. One arm man applauds the kindness of strangers. <laughs> George's face. This article was written by Jay. Cronley, but to Jay, if you're watching this, <laughs> put, put down a chalupa. Put down a chalupa, good sir. One of our men applauds the kinds of strangers. Come on, you, you, you're killing me here. Mm. Here's one number three Tiger Woods plays with his own balls, like he says. Okay, mm. okay, right. Mm. I need for David Craven <laughs> to have. Take several seats in the arena. <laughs> you say, why would you <laughs> in the arena? Just pick, pick one. They all empty. Pick one. Go down that, pick down that arrowhead and get take your feet down that arrowhead. Uh, number number four. Bridges help people cross rivers. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. Mm. <laughs> George's face is like, okay, what, and what else? <laughs> that's that's all the article says. Michelle DeCray, the Caven, or whatever her name is, she wrote this. Miss Michelle, I'm sure you're kind of cute, but you ain't very smart. Stop writing these crazy articles. Bridges help people cross rivers. We know that. <laughs> we know that. Hey, tell us something we don't know. I know. I know. I know the news media is going to the left. They have, the print paper is going away. And they're going to the print for some, uh, social media. And, and I get it. But just because you go out of business don't mean you got to write stuff like that. It's crazy. Right. Cross bridges. People. <laughs> rivers. What's, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm going to read one more. Uh -oh. I'll have one more. Wait, wait, wait. I got to find it. Here it goes. Last one. Number five. Rooms with broken air conditioners are hot. 
Let that sizzle in your spirit real quick. Literally. It's hot. Rooms with broken air conditioners uh -huh. are hot. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. I don't know who these people are, where this stuff is coming from, but if they don't quit this nonsense, I'm not reading any more next week. I'm reading something else. <laughs> this stuff is crazy. <laughs> Room with broken air conditioners are hot. Come on. Is it really? Is that how we're going to do things today? Are we that bored? Do we don't have anything else to write? That's like, it, it's like, here's an article for you. Weebles wobble, they don't fall down. <laughs> That's an article for you. If you're using, if you're using that logic, <laughs> Weebles wobble, they don't fall down. You know, penny racers, little cars with pennies in, they use pennies. That's a good article, right? <laughs> Let's get out of here. Listen, <laughs> we go to the top. <laughs> we go to the top five. Listen, man, we appreciate you. They, they done this week. Sorry. All right. All right, and we back, man. So we're gonna slide right into our first commercial break, and then we're gonna come back with the man of the half hour, Mr. Pitts. He's yes. got a lot of stuff to tell us. If you guys are struggling financially, credit wise, you may want to pay attention and stay yes. tuned to this because you know, you just might learn Maybe. something. Maybe. 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 Shout out to the E Digger, Mr. The man you all know and love, Mr. E Digger. I mocked him. All right. So we're going to jump right into our topic here with yes. the man of the half hour, Mr. George Pitts. Yes. Uh, so, AD, I'm going to check yes. on this one. It's the yes. floor of George, good sir. All right. So I appreciate uh, Mr. Pitts being in the building. I've yeah. known him obviously yeah. longer than I really thought about based on the age of his child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking one, his child is three. I'm like, wow, it's been uh, some time. Um, so I've been following him. He's, he spoke about tech. He speaks about finances. He's, he's rolling, talking about credit. Um, but one thing that why I really wanted him on this show um, is, is he shared a testimony about his time when he went to the bank and when he was working. Um, and if he can share that with you guys, if you've not heard this this testimony, what he learned <laughs> after you know using how to use a debit card and checks, yeah, it's it's, it's awesome. And then we'll I got some other questions for him, but I just wanted to share that that testimony about when he went to the bank. So you want to know something interesting before I get into that story? Yes. I have not remember that story till that day. Wow. Never spoke wow. it. Never told it to nobody until that day. Wow. I totally forgot about it until I was scoping that day. Right. <laughs> so, and, and it was really, now that I think about it, because when I thought, when I was speaking it, I don't know if many people could tell, but I was, I was really holding back because I, wow. I was getting emotional. emotional. Right. Uh, man, that was a suppressed memory. I, right. I, it just came out. I mean, literally, you guys saw it come out loud. That was right. right. Um, wow. But let me, let me share real quick. So when I was uh, 18, graduated you know going to college and uh in my hometown um you know uh i was i was working you know i was working but at the time my grades weren't good i tore my meniscus in, in football so um after playing sports for a long time and everything i was just like you know i'm done so uh you know fast forward what happened next was you know i ended up working you know and just working and so i remember at the time that was when those visa debit cards came out and so when you when I saw Visa, I'm thinking in my head that's big time. So I'm seeing people at the grocery store, at Walmart pulling out. You know, this will be six seventy one. Oh, okay, here's my card. And as a as a young black man that's never had it, that never seen something like that, I was like, that is the coolest thing. Like I know that probably sounds like, ooh, you know, but seriously, that's that's what my mind was. And so uh, because my grandmother was our bank. You know, if, if my uncles, my aunts, me, cousins, anything, if we wanted to save money, my grandmother had a pocketbook, man, that I swear had at least 40, you know what I'm saying, I, you know, uh, pockets in it. 
and everyone had a pocket that was assigned to them. And so you knew if you gave if you gave grandma forty dollars, forty dollars was coming back. You was getting it the same way you gave it. So, you know, fast forward, man, I got paid, and so I was like, man, I'm gonna go open me up a checking account. So I went there to the bank, um, you know, opened up the account, got a checkbook, got a debit card, and I just thought I was just on top of the world. I had about hundred dollars in the bank. I mean, that was big time to me. And so I go and I, you know. Uh, just got my apartment. So I went to the grocery store and bought all these groceries so I could stock my shelves and stock my refrigerator. And I wrote a check and they took it, signed off on it. Everything was good. So the check was more than what I had in the bank. It was like $116 or whatever. But what I didn't know is that when it goes through check systems or when it goes through the system and it goes to the bank, if there's not enough money there, you get an insufficient funds fee. That's 35 bucks, right? Then they'll send it a second time. If it still ain't there the second day, it's another 35, that's 70. They send it a third day, it's another 35, that's 105. So then what happens is it sits on there in their uh, little, you know, where you can go get money orders and cash your checks in the grocery stores. I don't even know if grocery stores have that anymore, but you know, back, you know, in the day, you used to be able to go and cash the checks at the grocery store. So uh, they they blow your check up really big. And so anyway, um, it, it kept going. And then eventually it, uh, you know, everything, all the other checks that I was writing, I was writing checks for gas. I was writing checks for, you know, all this other stuff. Because I'm just thinking in my head, when I get paid, it'll take care of it. So uh, I worked 62 hours in one week during this time. So I was like, man, I'm gonna get a fat check. You know, I'm gonna have 22 hours of overtime, 40 hours of regular time. I just couldn't wait. Go to the ATM to take money out, says your transactions declined. And at the time there was an online banking. So I'm like, you know, my check should have been here at midnight, you know, so no problem. Let me go to the bank. So I went to the bank and um, they said, you know, you have insufficient funds. You got a, you got insufficient funds, like 400 or some dollars or some ridiculous number like what and they said yeah you know your check only covered you know like you had like 700 or something you know something astronomical but you still have a balance even after your paycheck of like four something i was like no nah. they said well you're gonna need to go down to the basement so i went down to the basement mind you when i drove to the bank i had no gas i had no food i was looking forward to this money to go pay bills get groceries all this other stuff i get down there i'm talking to this this lady and she's like you know, sir, you, you have about $400 in overdraft fees. You know, um, I can't give you any money until this is brought to a positive balance. I said, ma'am, you know, and I'm like sitting there about to cry like, ma'am, I don't have that money. Like, is there something you can do? She said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to erase half of the, the funds, which came out to like 220 or 240. And so I'm going to give you $240 back. I said, oh, thank God. And so in my head, I'm thinking she's going to give me $240 back, like in cash. So I'm thinking I can work with $240. i will make some arrangements on my bills. You know, I can work with this. So she's like, okay, Mr. Pitts, everything is is good. You know, um, you know, thanks so much. I was like, so where do I go get cash out if I need it? Uh, she's like, oh, you're going to need to go upstairs to the teller. So I go upstairs from the basement to the teller and the lady's like, you know, I gave her my account number, everything. So I'd like to pull out $240. I wanted the exact amount. And she looked and she she had these glasses on. And when she was typing in my account number, she looked over at the glass and kind of went like this. And she's like, uh, sweetie, uh, you have a negative balance of $240. I was like, no, no, no. And I said, yeah, that's there. But I talked to the lady downstairs. She she refunded it. You know, I, I should be good to go. She's like, okay, just hold on a second. So she went, pulled up the phone and you know what i'm saying talked and said okay all right understood and so i'm hearing this understood you know and she's got this little smirk on her face and i was like okay cool you know i'm thinking everything's good she comes back she's like sweetie until you know you had a balance of 440 dollars she refunded 220 you still have a negative balance of 220. and i remember thinking but she told me i could get 220 cash she's like no sweetie she gave you back 220 but that went against your balance you still got to come up with the other 220 on top of whatever you want to take out if you want money to come back. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. So I went back to my car and I sat there for about 30 minutes because in my head I'm thinking, okay, I've got to get food. I have no, I don't even know if I have enough gas to get back to my apartment. 
I just got paid today, which means I got to get paid for two more weeks. How am I going to get back and forth to work? And man, I just remember being like, oh my God, what am I going to do? That was the lowest point of my life. And until I actually, this is only the second time I've even spoken that story outside the first time you guys heard it. Right. And that was a suppressed memory because that was the lowest point of my life. Wow. Lowest point. Wow. Wow. Man, I, yeah, I, uh, I've been there. I've been there. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I walked that walk um, a few times. Yeah. So, yeah, got to be better with the money. That's why you. That's, why, that's probably why you are. Why you are, where you are right now because of that experience. I had to go through that to appreciate everything that I've gone through since then. Right. Right. You know, there's people that are broke, and then there's broke broke. <laughs> I was broke broke. <laughs> so, I appreciate <laughs> being just. You know, this is gonna sound crazy, but I appreciated it. Just being broke, you know. Yeah. Out, you know, right. broke. Right. 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 My gas tank was broke. Right. My refrigerator was broke. Every I was broke, broke, broke. Right. So, you know, I had to bring a little humor to that man because that was uh, that was a story I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, you know, I don't miss it all. I got you. I got you. I mean, I did. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah, I've been tight. Not as bad as that, because yeah, I try not to. I've when I got hit with the the um, insufficiency, I was like, oh. And then, then the insufficient on top of the insufficient, where you don't put money in there in a timely manner. He's like, wait, hold on. How you just go keep charging me? You know. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna get you. You know. I'm gonna get you. Oh. Yeah. You know how many accounts I've had closed because of this? Oh man, I was man. I, listen, brother, <laughs> my, check system, my check system file probably took two or three guys to lift that box. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something, we're man. We're not, Those checks I wrote was set, yeah. building on fire, man. They was that hot. <laughs> <laughs> not even the ocean it. that fire down, boy. This still burning, so. <laughs> oh lord. So. At, uh, and then I know you um so just just a quick plug if you guys don't know just throw it out there right now because a lot of what he shares comes from his book uh, Joseph the seven seven principles of financial prosperity Joseph economy it's a really great read um, you get a lot of tips on investing entrepreneurship um, banking things of that nature um, and all a lot of interlaced with biblical principles so it's it's a really good read I enjoyed it um and. The, now the testimony wasn't in there. He shared it on a Periscope, and I was like, "Oh man, you know, like, because I know, because everyone usually generally has a testimony to where they got, how they got to getting into their whatever it is that they enjoy or whatever it is that they do. There was a testimony behind it, and his is always been finance and credit. So he had to go through to really start digging in and saying, "How can we fix this trend? Because it's not just him; and so many others. It's like, why are we all?" falling into the same trap um so i wanted to bring him on not only to just share that but what has he learned um when it comes to finance and credit like what are some of the the secrets that you didn't know that you know now that's helped you with your credit um, before you answer that george before you answer that before you answer that it's commercial time <laughs> <laughs> Just in the sake, just for the sake of time and time constraints, you know. <laughs> I think I take my producing job very seriously, sir. I see that. I see that. I like that. I like that. I can appreciate that. Yes, that's a thing. Yeah. All right. So, let me be ready. So, so yes. you want to repeat the question? No, I think you know it. They see okay. it. It can write. It's all right. 
<laughs> for me, man, I'd say what it was for me was um, just understanding, you know, um, suppressing uh, instant gratification. Um, I think what it was for me, the reason that I overspent so much is because I felt I had to have something right then and there. So I would write the check that I had no business writing. I'd spend the money I had no business spending. I would, you know, sign and agree to, you know, terms that I had no business agreeing to. Right. So for me, what it taught me was that, see, by nature and by DNA, I'm a very impatient man, very impatient, gotcha. which fuels instant gratification. Right. Right. So for me, the, the key was, I know a lot of people say, well, it's budgeting for me, this for me. No, it was delaying gratification. Right. I had to learn how to go without things that I wanted and work harder for the things that I, that, that I really wanted, that I needed. Right. I so you. I think what it was for me was that once I learned how to delay that gratification, right. you know, I started to achieve certain goals in my life that I had never imagined before as far as like getting the car that I want. Right. Having, you know, a thousand dollars saved up, which was something I'd never done before until my late twenties. All those little things, man, um, you know, was things that really contributed to me saying, wait a minute, if you apply this to like all these other things, wow. you could do some serious damage, dude. Wow. And man, it just kind of took off from there. Wow. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. So so what um so in your in your journey of, of discovering how to delay your gratification um, and and clean up like your, your credit and things of that nature, um, what are what are some of the tips that you would give to someone that's like you, like your like ten years ago, like if you ran into someone like yourself ten years earlier, if you ran into your same self, what would you tell them um, to do differently? So the first thing that I would do is check your credit on a regular. Um, you know, you get a free a free credit report at annualcreditreport.com once a year. But right now, because of COVID, you get a week. Right. Um, another thing that I would tell a person to do, um, because for me, I'll just be transparent. I remember my scores like the back of my head. My Equifax score was a 512. My TransUnion was a 516. And my Experian was a 494. Wow. Very, very low scores. Right. So, um, you know, what I had to do was we spent three years and over $6,000 over the course of those three years, paying companies to, to fix it for us. The best thing that I did was educate myself on exactly how that game works. Uh, One thing that you cannot do as men and women is you can't have things that tie into your finances, something that someone else knows how to fix or manipulate or do, and you don't. Because the thing about it is that because you don't know it, they can they can bleed you for whatever you want and you may right. still never get the results that you want. Wow. The next thing that I would do is make sure that you're because the way that your your credit card your credit score is made up is 35% is your payment history. So how are you paying your bills on time? 30% right. is amounts owed. That's how that's your credit utilization. Right. So if you have a credit card limit of a thousand dollars, FICO likes to see you around 30% or less. So if you got a thousand dollar credit limit, you shouldn't be spending more than three hundred dollars a month on that or you're going to lose points right the next thing is your age of, your age of history that's how the oldest and the least oldest car or at least oldest account that's open and active is okay the fourth thing is your credit mix so they like to see that you got like maybe a mortgage an auto loan a credit card that you can manage multiple things yeah. and the fourth one this is the one that people get tripped up on whatever it is that you do do not go and apply for a lot of credit so credit mix is the one that really trips people up because they see it and, and it's made up of 10% or not credit mix, excuse me, new credit. So it's worth 10% of your score, but it's actually the one negative part of the calculation. So a lot of people think, oh, credit, uh, you know, new credit. So I need to go apply for a credit card. I need to go apply for a loan. So they go and do all that. They get all these inquiries and then they score drops. Right. And that's because they, in their mind, because they don't tell you this, they think the credit, new credit 10% is going to help boost it if they go and get new accounts. Right. In theory, it actually drops you because it lowers your age of history. So if you've got a 10 year old card and a five year old card, your average age is five years. Now, if you go and get a new credit card, wow. you throw a one month old card into a 10 and a five, you're right. going to drop down to like two and a half. Ah. Now you're going to take a hit there. You're going to take okay. another 10% hit from the new credit. Right. And it's going to take you about a year before you recover those points. Wow. Yeah. Didn't know that one. 
Learn okay. something new. Nice, bro. <laughs> it trips you up, man. <laughs> Learn something new. Nice. Hey, hey, but Joe, don't ask questions because because I I sell cars for a living, right? Gotcha. And so people always ask, and I I, I never give the answer because I don't know. When you bought you bought a car before, yeah? Oh, yeah. So you get you get the, you get the first car you get the first set of numbers from a, a desking manager, and he pulls your credit, mm-hmm. and then it goes over to finance, and then they send it over to the bank, right? And the bank pulls it a second time right. in one visit. Mm-hmm. So the first pull from the from the desking manager is a soft pull. And the second one from the bank is a hard pull, or is it? Mm-hmm. Are they, both they, hard? they say that <laughs> the only people that can do a soft pull are promotional people. So this is like you know how you get the credit card offers in the mail, right. you get yeah. the mortgage offers that you've been pre-approved for. Right. I don't want to be pre-approved for this. That's a soft pull. Uh, and soft pulls happen when they're going to send you a promotional offer. Right. So if you look at your credit report, there's an inquiry section, and then there's a promotional inquiry section. So that's when you see like the triple A's, the all states, the, right. you know, uh, Don Juan, Auto Mall, you know, they've yeah. already done a soft pool for promotional reasons. When uh, you, you give someone verbal communication to do it, that is considered a hard pool. Oof. And so what happens is this is how, you know, and I don't know how it is at your lot, but this is how most lots work. A car lot will, will basically pull your credit. And let's say they pull your credit and they pull your transunion. And your transunion shows you got a 580. So they're thinking, okay, here's 10 banks that we've worked with that approve between a 570 and a 590. They shoot all your information for those banks and all of those banks pull. And then what happens is they send a rate back and they say, okay, here's what we're willing to offer. We'll offer them a 12% interest rate. But for every point that you go up, which a point is a percent, we'll give you this much more money. So the finance manager knows they got 12% in their pocket, but they're going to check your temperature at 18. And a lot of people will take the first offer because they just want the car. Right. So you got to finance. This is why finance managers make so much money. Because right. if, if it's if it's like, okay, you sell it at 12%, we're going to cut your, your place a $5,000 check. And if the finance manager gets you know, 10% of that, that's 500. But right. for every point you go up, we're going to give you a $500 bonus on top of that. Right. They're going to go up five points. That's another $3,000 on top of the five. And instead of it being, you know, 500, you know, 10% or 15, they're going to get, you know, maybe 20%. Wow. And so they, wow. and then what they do is they keep going back and forth. And if you're still kind of there, they'll say, okay, let's go and look at road loans. Let's go and look at Santander because they'll send it to Santander. They'll send it to Roll on the Central. I know all these things. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, what they, you know, and, and that's kind of how it works. And so a lot of people, they'll go buy a car and some people won't even get a, back in the day, you used to not get approved, but now it's almost impossible not to get anybody can do it. Wow. And so you might have your car for a month and all of a sudden you get like seven letters in the mail. Here's your, here's your, we pulled your credit, roll loan. We pulled your credit, coastal. We pulled I'll your see those. Capital yeah. One. And you like, oh, oh, okay. And no, no one's thinking about it. Just like toss it. You know, I already right. got the card. And all right. those are inquiries. Right. They they to 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 oh, man. Not that I didn't know. Right. That I didn't know. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> hey. Here's a tip always do your financing first. Right. So, what I tell people to do, bank with a credit union. Build a relationship with them. When you want a car, go and find it. Tell your credit union, look, I'm looking for a 2013 Dodge Charger. Your credit union is going to look at the what they call, it's not the blue book, they're going to look at the NADA. And they're going to say, okay, this is what we're willing to loan on this car. So here, here here's a here's like a, a letter. We'll give you 25, you can loan up to 25,000. Anything over you need to come up with, anything below your payments will be cheaper than this number. Here's the rate we can give you. Credit unions are always going to give you the best rate. So when you right. go to, when you go and see my brother Terry over here, you say, you know, you show you, sh- he's showing you some Dodge Chargers, and um, you What's know, like okay, you know, we can get you financed. You're like, no, 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 Terry, I'm good. Right. I already got it. Now you got a lot of negotiating power. Right. You can get Terry to, to his Terry's boss is going to have to throw in that that uh, that extended warranty. Terry's going to have to lower that price because 
now they the only thing they've got is that we got to sell this car because we can't sell them we can't sell the note we can't sell this and they'll try to come back and say well why don't what rate are you getting well, i'm getting eight percent i think we can get you six and mm -hmm. some people will fall for it right yeah. Come back. yeah the best we can do is nine. So that's right. why I always tell people get your financing first. So when you walk in there, it's just you picking the car, filling out the paperwork. You know, my brother Terry gets hit, gets to feed his family. You get to right. feed Joe adrenaline by driving <laughs> out the road. Yeah, right. and, wow. and, and he means that literally. So right. if you're listening to this, he's come on down here. If you and I, that was a commercial. Right, I, 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 I sell cars too, brother. Please understand. I, I I sell cars in Idaho, but I ship them everywhere. I'm just saying. I got you. I don't want to check. I got you. See you, boy. <laughs> He's GP approved. Right. Oh, big boy. There you go. Yeah, yeah. you're good now. You good. <laughs> one, one more before AD. I know AD has another question, but I, no, I, I want to ask this because this is the um, a, a, a misconception. Oh, I don't know if it is or not. People say to me all the time in the car game, they say, well, my credit is good, but I got a bunch of medical bills on my credit report. Mm -hmm. Is it illegal for the credit companies to report credit because of HIPAA? It's just a, it's a rumor that I've heard. No, I don't know. that's untrue. It is okay. illegal for them to provide. So medical bills are the easiest bills to get removed from your credit. And the reason for that is because when you ask for validation and verification, there's two things that can happen. One, the hospital is going to follow HIPAA and say, you're not on the list to release medical information. Therefore, it has to be removed. Or two, they're going to release the information. You're going to go hire a civil general, a civil rights attorney, and you're going to file a HIPAA lawsuit with a $50,000 default bill. You know, right. deal. Oh, wow. you're going to pay him his 20, 30%. You're going to walk away with about 25, 30, and that item is going to be removed. So, right. no, it is not illegal for it to be reported, but it's very difficult for agencies to actually validate it because right. they can't get that information. But right. many people don't know that, so they just kind of let it sit. Medical debt's right. easiest, but a lot of people don't know that. Well, he dropping some <laughs> diamonds today, boy. <laughs> so, like Sierra Leone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me ask you uh, so you're a full time entrepreneur um, I know you uh, spoke about you leaving the job or, or one, in your book you talk about uh, getting fired oh, I was fired from that job <laughs> right, right. <laughs> let's make it clear it's fired <laughs> but, I, was, I was let go boy spread <laughs> <laughs> no rumors now <laughs> <laughs> no 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 it's in the book no, um, no, so kidding. what what's it been like being an entrepreneur because everyone had the glamour of cool. to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Let, let so me tell you something, man. Tell the truth. Let's just get the real. Life. Everybody thinks entrepreneurship is smiles and Hallmark cards. Right. And it's not. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not a Hallmark movie. It's a horror movie. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not Win Dixie and, and Christmas. It's right. The Ring 2 <laughs> <laughs> in Antarctica. You know? Oh, right. <laughs> it's, 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 it, you know, it's, it's Michael Myers beats Jason, <laughs> you know, uh, no, nah, let, let, let me back up. Listen, man, it has, it has a lot of, uh, it has a lot of benefits, right. but you've got to have the right mentality because when you have a business, whether it's a side hustle, part-time business, something you work outside of your hours, like I, you know, did for many years, uh, you've got to be disciplined enough to know that, okay, even if I get off at five o'clock, I still got to do X, Y, and Z to make things work even if I got to do this till 11, 12, one o'clock in the morning. And, um, but outside of that, one of the things is, you know exactly what you got coming in and what's going out. So you know the state of the company. You're not, we're laying off because we, because you don't know the state of the company. There's people going to work right now and Monday, they're not going to have a job. Every day there's there's somebody that gets let go. Right. Because you don't know, you don't know the state of the company. You just think as long as I keep showing up and doing that, with entrepreneurship, you know where you stand. You give yourself a raise. You can give yourself a bonus. I gave myself a twelve thousand dollar bonus last month. Nice. Um, I earned it. Right. Um, and that's that was a beautiful thing to do. You can't uh, believe that. 
Yeah, right. you know, and um, you know, I bought, you know, I bought multiple properties at multiple streams of income, but you got to deal with that kind of stuff. Like I had a, a house that the plumbing went bad on, and a hot water tank went out. Wow! So I had to deal with that on the same night where I had three coaching clients lined up, and I had to cancel all three of them right. because I had to address this problem. Right. You know, and then the next day the stock market drops, and I lose twenty two hundred dollars in one day. Right. Not to mention, I just had to replace a hot water paint. And then I had to cancel three paid coaching calls. Right. So this is the kind of stuff that people don't hear about. Right. You're talking about seven, eight thousand dollars gone in 24 hours. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's some people that don't even make that in one month right. and to lose it in 24 hours. Oh, right. But the thing is, is that when you know how to make money and you know how to get it back, you know how to build and you and, and you know how to run your business. Uh, yeah, it bothers you. I ain't gonna tell you, you know, I'm still pissed about it. And it was, you know, it was last year. <laughs> but, uh, and I've made that money back who knows how many times over since. Right. Then. But the right. thing yeah. about it is that, you know, for me, it just, you have to have that discipline. You gotta have that mentality and you gotta have a mindset to understand that not everybody's gonna, especially an online business owner, you gotta have a mindset that not everybody's gonna agree with you. But you also got to have that mindset that you're not right about everything. Mm, right. Okay. Boy, let me tell you. So, George, before we get out of here, man, yeah. how can the folks get a hold of you? Yes. So uh, I'm pretty active on Instagram and Periscope, but I'm on all social media platforms at Mr. George Pitts, um, at Mr. George Pitts. So that's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, you know, wherever. I'm I'm there. Uh, I'm pretty active on Periscope and Instagram mostly, but you know I I, I I'm around. I've actually got a team now. They check a lot of these things. Uh, right. I've got a virtual assistant. I've got a marketing team now. We just hired. Uh, we've got uh, a funnels team. Uh, so I've got during the pandemic, I actually hired folks, uh, which was very which was very nice. And so uh, you know I mean? and not hard to find. <laughs> you know, you might not be able to. Well, what kind of experience you got? <laughs> You know, hey, listen, I, I, listen, I, I don't I'm a series of entrepreneurs. I don't mind opening up a, a car lot and letting you run. You got that experience, man. I'll put the cash behind it. Quit playing. I'll move up. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man, you, you ain't got to move nowhere. I can catch a flight down there. We can set up shop. Now, I know who you want. <laughs> okay, well, you know, you know the same story better than That's me. That's why I say I'll go there. I'll go there. You might have to, have to come here. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get out of there, bro. Woo. Listen, Lord, I, 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 at the end of the day, man, I got an investor mentality. If there is there cash there, I you know, I invested in a business that I don't even run a few months ago and I get a check every month nice. from that investment. So I'm I'm big on putting money in people's hands that I know can can turn it into more for me. I, I can't do this by myself and I ain't trying to. I know I'm, that's I, right. Man, I gotta We'll talk about it off camera, but listen, <laughs> if, you, if you guys are, if you guys have enjoyed this yes. uh, podcast today, yes, reach out. If you need a financial counselor, I don't know a better dude. I don't know nobody else. You know what I'm saying? That's better than this cat right here. So listen, Definitely. reach out. Yes. You want your credit straight? Reach that. out. Definitely. If you want, if, if you need, if you want to know how the credit work, reach out. That's the yeah. guy for you. So. <laughs> AD, any closing comments for you leave out of here, bro? No, man. I just want to tell them I appreciate them coming on and, and sharing yeah, with them and knowledge and giving us this time because I know it's precious and valuable. Exactly. So yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, definitely, if you guys, whatever you need as far as credit, coaching, entrepreneurship, this dude, he he doesn't just coach it. He does it. He shows it. And I, and if you follow him on Facebook or even Instagram, you get to see the process. You get to see the transformation. So He's not just talking and, and blowing smoke. He's, he's real about what he does. So definitely, um, I appreciate him even sharing his knowledge with us and with you guys. Um, right. we'll appreciate you being on here. Yeah, for sure. We, we, man, I appreciate you do that, man. I, I love what y'all are doing. I think y'all the dynamic duo, man. Y'all first. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, we can't do it. We can. I think <laughs> on Facebook. Man. My brother yeah. was on here a few months ago. Yeah, yeah, brother, yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, I, I love what y'all are doing, man. Y'all are yin and yang. I love it. And yeah. man, uh, I, I, I can't wait to see what y'all got next, man. I would love to come back anytime. Awesome. awesome. We appreciate you. And, and, and let me say this one thing, last thing before we, go, before we get out of here. Just so if anybody's watching on Charm City, uh, Periscope, wherever you're watching this at, replay, uh, watch party, um, 
we've all, if you were here long enough to hear his testimony, we've all been in that place right. to where we didn't know how we were going to eat. Uh, we didn't know how we were going to put gas in our car. We've all been there. Right. He is a true testament to just because I was there, don't mean I got to stay there. Right. And so you can look at the story from A to B or A to Z. If you want that, you have to, you got to put in some work. And if you need help in that area, this is the guy to re- I'm telling you, yes. Yes. I'm going to hire this dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm a married man. I'm going to cry with kids and get my credit straight because my credit sucks. I'm going to lie to you. But we're going to get to that. <laughs> You're so right. you guys, we're going to get out of here. You guys have a great rest of your day, man. We yes. love y'all here at the Brothers of uh, Talk. Brothers of Talk. Brothers. Too many shows. Too many shows. Too many shows. Running, 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 show running together. Running together. <laughs> but you guys have a great We'll see you next yes. time. All right? Peace out, guys. Thank you for watching and listening to the Brothers Who Talk. Brothers Who Talk. With Terry and AD. Check us out again next week, where we bring you a steaming helping of common sense, laughs, and advice. We can be found on any podcasting platform, iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. We're also on MileHighRadio.com, Saturdays at 12 Eastern. See you there.